Today, we are going to talk about a profound topic. Which is the features or characteristics of mainland Chinese? Many people say that China has a history of 5,000 years and is different from any civilization in the world. No matter where the mainland Chinese is in the world, he will always have a mainland Chinese feature or characteristic that people can recognize him as a typical mainland Chinese at a glance. So what are the features or characteristics of a mainland Chinese? Are these good or bad? Let's start with the mainland Chinese are all similar in appearance as if they were carved out of the same mold. Mainland Chinese always wear dull blue or green clothes traditionally. And when it comes to characteristics, the mainland Chinese have many in common. The mainland Chinese are very industrious. And it is rare to see idlers. It seems like everyone is busy, for example. Mainland Chinese workers usually run dozens of miles in order to collect pennies. Chinese students can spend almost their entire lives. In taking exams, female mainland Chinese peasants like to do housework. Shops in China always open early but never close. Even the rich family is very hardworking, striving to earn as much money as possible. This is why the mainland Chinese are fierce in striving to compete in the world today. This is very natural to the mainland Chinese. However, the labor paid by the common mainland Chinese workers has not been rewarded with equal value in China. For the common mainland Chinese, this is a negative example of working hard to get rich. In the past, food is very scarce, basically rice, millet and some vegetables and beans are quite limited in China. In the eyes of foreigners, many things that mainland Chinese people eat are so inferior that they are almost inedible. There are also some things that Westerners do not eat, such as chicken feet, chicken butts, pig heads, genitals of animals, and more. But the mainland Chinese have superb cooking skills and can make their poor food very delicious. In general, mainland Chinese people basically have no pursuit of quality of life. They never care about crowding and noise when they sleep. Their voices are loud and they smoke a lot of cigarettes and drink high content of alcohol almost every day. The poor people in China are very patient and will not complain as long as they have a bite to eat. The gap between the rich and the poor in China is big. The vision of the poor and ignorant people is like a frog at the bottom of a well who can only see a little light through the narrow mouth of the well. They don't know how outsiders in the world live. So this is why the mainland Chinese are so hardworking, yet still living a life of hardship and poverty. Here I will explain to you a little bit that the common mainland Chinese people have always been poor since the past, even today. A typical cashier's earning is less than 500 United States dollars a month. It is because the mainland Chinese have been involuntarily involving in the peasant economy since more than 2,000 years ago. The Chinese dynasties have always practiced legalism. Legalism was developed in China by a philosopher named Han Feizi. Other philosophers also contributed to this school of thought, which suggested that human actions were largely motivated by self-benefit and that they were more likely to do wrong than right, if not deterred by stringent laws. China has been a mixture of Confucianism and legalism since the Qin and Han dynasties. The core of legalism's thought is to strengthen the country and weaken the people. The logic is to make the people both ignorant and poor. Only in this way will they respect the high authorities and the country will be strong. Only when a person works hard every day will he work hard. He is completely centered around the interests of the monarch. Confucianism solves the problem of the legitimacy of the monarch's rights. As a result, under the suppression of this kind of power, the mainland Chinese fell into endless bottom-level involution and could not extricate themselves. Only in this way will they respect the high authorities and the country will be strong. So, what are the problems? First of all, although the common mainland Chinese are hardworking and the rich are craving for more power and money, there are some virtues that are noticeably lacking. Mainland Chinese people don't tell the truth and they don't believe the truth. It is very difficult to get the truth among them. No one dares to say that they have fully figured out the truth of a matter from the mainland Chinese. Many mainland Chinese people always promise in words but actually do nothing in action. To mainland Chinese doing business has the nature of deceiving each other. If the deception is successful, the business will be completed. 
Many stores in China have signs, such as genuine goods at a fair price, but in fact, there are fake things, fake prices, and all kinds of fake goods. Secondly, there is no sense of public morality. The mainland Chinese don't care about other people and only care about themselves. The mainland Chinese people generally lack altruism. A passing vehicle will give someone on a road a ride if there is an empty seat, but in China, such a good thing will not happen. Even if a person walks thousands of kilometers alone, it is difficult for strangers to get help from others. Mainland Chinese people do not trust each other and are always suspicious and defensive. They often lie to each other and don't trust anyone, especially foreigners. They are prejudiced against foreigners. Foreigners are basically regarded as bad people or big bullies. This is the reason Bruce Lee could be easily famous. It is also noted that Bruce Lee preferred to stay in the US to China. Why didn't he get married with a Chinese and stay in China? The mainland Chinese are proud of what they have possessed. And they could even believe that the so-called science and mathematics in the West are things left by their ancestors long ago. This euphemistic way of expression of the mainland Chinese undoubtedly increases the cost of communication between people and also makes many mainland Chinese people have a thinking inertia. That is, they will never look at problems realistically, such as how much one plus one is equal to. In the eyes of a rational person, one plus one should equal to. But the mainland Chinese tend to make things complicated. Some people will tell you that one plus one equals 11. Others will tell you that one plus one is equal to king. They have the inability to seek truth from facts, for example, the food safety and labor rights issues, even for copyrights and data privacy. People are very indifferent to many national affairs. This is also because the mainland Chinese do not have much qualification to talk about state affairs under the long-term suppression of power. There is an old saying in China that it is better to believe what you have than to believe what you have not. This leads to the absence of any religious belief. To be precise, mainland Chinese do not completely believe in a certain religion or a certain god. Most of them worship God because they feel that God can bring some kind of benefit rather than belief from the heart. Confucianism has the deepest influence on Chinese people. In the past, more than 90% were illiterate, so they had no access to the real Confucianism. Therefore, those who really believed in Confucianism were generally literate and officials belonging to the upper class. While ordinary people could only come into contact with the rigid and superficial things in Confucianism. Example is filial piety, which is to carry on the family line from generation to generation. Children owe their parents debts at birth, so they have to spend their entire lives in poverty to repay their parents' upbringing debts. Confucianism is also actually a form of ancestor worship, in which deceased ancestors play the role of gods. This also causes people's thoughts to be imprisoned by their ancestors all the time. In addition to ancestor worship, mainland Chinese also worship nature. The ancients believed that the heaven, earth, mountains and rivers, and all kinds of flying and running creatures are the incarnation of gods. Ancestor worship and nature worship are very primitive beliefs. There is a word called fate mainland Chinese people believe in. People often say that life and death are determined by fate. Wealth and honor are determined by the will of heaven. We often say that China's thousand-year civilization is extensive and profound, but not all ancient practices are good. Today, many people are laughing at the Indians who use urine and cow dung to treat diseases, but they don't know that it is in Chinese medicine. I hope you have some understand about the mainland Chinese, and I will be doing more videos in this. Please stay tuned by subscribing my channel. Thank you.